Well, we're joined by Paul Page here, and we're going to talk about his book, Along Came a Lion. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing smashing, and I feel really special because this book, <laughs> Along Came a Lion, I got a chance to read it, but I believe it's not actually out yet, right? That is right. It is, uh, it is not yet released. Hmm. What is the cause of the delay? Is there a delay or are you just waiting? Well, we we were going to self-publish this particular book mm. and that had been the thread we were we were working on. But after working with our editors, they suggested we seek traditional publishing first. Mm. They think the book is worthy of it. So mm. we're in the middle of doing that. Yeah. And what is the extra benefit of traditional publishing that you don't get from self-publishing? You know, no one's really explained that to me. Other than, <laughs> uh, I think the issue is is primarily if you if you get traditional publishing, they have built in processes mm -hmm. uh, for advertising the book and yeah. doing marketing related to it, as opposed to taking that on yourself. Yeah. So, for all the losers that haven't read the book, how <laughs> would you describe the overall premise of it? You know. Um, a lot of people ask me that, and, I, and originally I, I would have thought it was more of a science fiction book, but I don't think that's true. Mm. I really think it's kind of a science fiction near future thriller um, yeah. is, is the way it's best been described by several of my editors. They also suggest I use the uh, uh, term, um, oh, I'll, just, I'll just go with that. I don't want to overwhelm uh, the thing. It doesn't fit into neat categories mm. um, unless you thought differently because I know you yeah. had a chance to review it. Mm. Yeah, I think the way you described it is probably about right. And you say you don't want to overwhelm everyone, but there is a lot of stuff going on in the book still, isn't there? That's true. Yes, it is a complex book. Um, I tried to streamline it as much as possible, but because of the themes that are involved, um, I, I'm hopeful it, it has a it resounds really well with the wide audience. Mm. And right from the start, there's sort of a lot of political things going on, a lot of political exposition, shall we say? What gave you the idea for that? Well, I'm trying to set the stage for um, a book that, in my opinion, will will carry multiple themes, and one of them is a cautionary tale. Mm. And uh, the way that politics in the United States are currently set up, everybody is at odds with each other. And we had mm. to create a world, um, had to create a world that followed at least some vein. Uh, so it's not just chaos everywhere you looked around. And, and we tried to, at least in my opinion, I, I tried to do the best I could to reflect um, a world where it's easy to have an antagonist that's believable, mm. having a foreign antagonist that's willing to engage in military activity in the United States. And we had to set it up a certain way for that. Mm, absolutely. And how long did it take you to write the book? Oh, see, no, that's a long story. <laughs> because we were, I originally started writing this when I was in high school, which is over 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, and multiple parts of the book uh, were written as, as uh, for an entirely different concept. Mm. And uh, most recently in, in 2019, late 2019, my brothers challenged me to uh, stop talking about it and just write the thing. And so I wrote it in uh, about four months. Mm. And did you get it done before the pandemic? Uh, yes. So yeah. it actually was, it was, com it was completed. Well, I will say right around March of April mm. of 2020. Um, so right, right when everything was kind of exploding, yeah. I finished it. It's interesting because do you think that the pandemic would have helped you have a little bit more time or because maybe do you have a job where your schedule was still the same? Well, it's still the same. I, I'm an attorney and so it keeps uh, keeps me busy. I'm, I'm very busy, but um, it would have been nice to have more free time, but you just kind of have to carve it out mm. if uh, if you're trying to write something that's been on my mind for so many years it really took some time to to try to put it on paper i guess yeah. type it out now <laughs> which is what we do and why did you think it took so long to put pen to paper because obviously you wanted to write a, the book i'm guessing because it was still very much in your mind for 30 years you didn't forget about it i don't know the answer to that i mean <laughs> uh to be honest i 
I didn't, I always thought about um, becoming an author full time. That had always been a desire of mine. Yeah. But once I became an attorney, it sort of consumed my time. Before that, I was a private investigator. And so I did that for many years. And that also consumed my time. And I just never seemed to have the time raising <laughs> kids. Just never have the time. Yeah. And I'm curious as well, because the PDF of the book that you sent me is titled Along Came a Lion V99. Does that mean it's the 99th version? Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, what I do is every time I'm going to make edits or modifications to the, the book itself, even editing modifications, I save it as a separate ver version. So yes, wow. that's the 99th version. Yeah. So, I mean, how major are these edits? Is it typos and things or could it be so many different major changes each time? No, it's primarily just typos. Uh, mm -hmm. If I notice a typo or, or inadvertently I'd use the name incorrectly and someone would call that out to me, mm -hmm. I'll save it as a separate version. We did do some fairly significant changes in what was called version 65. That mm -hmm. was the version of the book that went out to several book clubs and, uh, and it went out for uh, people to give reviews on. And I circulated probably widely several hundred people have seen that version, mm -hmm. but we changed things after that my my um i had my editor come through and suggest a couple of chapters needed to be modified and so we i did that yeah and even after the book is released this i think sometimes authors still sort of edit things they notice mistakes later right <laughs> yes I, I think that's i think that goes without saying almost mm. that uh that, that people will try to constantly edit their work i hope to get yeah. to a point where i look at it and go and say okay it's done Mm. But uh, but certainly if people raise issues, um, I, I'm i always thinking in my mind, you know, maybe another line or two about that might be helpful. Yeah. I try to avoid adding more. It's long enough. Yeah, that's certainly true yeah. because it's a 788 page book and yet it feels like it goes quicker than you'd expect. I don't know if it's just because it's really thrilling and enjoyable or the font is bigger. I mean, do you know? Well, I hope it's the first one <laughs> as opposed to the font. But yes, everybody that has read my book so far gives very similar feedback about it mm. that it does seem to go quite quickly. The The beginning portions of the book, you know, the, remo removing a lot of exposition and focusing on the character development between my main characters, uh, Daniel and his wife, yeah. um, it, it builds a lot of interaction and um, an emotional um, connection that I think is important as the rest of the event suddenly unfold and then all of a sudden it's ha all these things are happening in their lives. Yeah, and speaking of the characters, I like how near the end of the book you can sort of introduce yourselves to the characters in a different way it sort of has a picture of them and gives you a description <laughs> as well oh, right i did i did that um i find it easier when when i'm writing to to visualize the characters yeah. if if i'm visualizing what i'm writing as a scene in the movie and so i licensed uh, a bunch of model images wow. from models that seem to approximate the characters to me yeah so could these are these models used in other things too like could we see the main character on a billboard for something completely different i'd imagine they could be uh they that easily could be i licensed those particular images not the model themselves which is probably way over budget yeah. if i tried to do, <laughs> yeah, if like, i tried to do that but yeah yeah that'd be the end of their whole career they can only work that's for you right now. Yeah. yeah that that probably won't fly but yeah. yes, the images could obviously be used for for other purposes. These yeah. models offered these images for sale and licensing. So, Yeah. And I think you told me um, in a message before that you copy, you'd copywritten the book with the US government. What does that actually mean? Um, it just protects the text as written. Ah. So it, before I distributed it, for to people that I didn't know, um, I obtained copyright protection and not mm -hmm. to go into a bunch of legal jargon. It essentially means if somebody copies the text that I've put in there, 
I have already protected it. You're already protected by the copyright law, but mm. registering it with the uh, Library of Congress is that extra step. Yeah, absolutely. The copyright you don't office. Get into some weird issue of nobody knows who wrote it first. Correct. Like if all of a sudden you see a movie and it doesn't have Paul Page attached to it and it has a lot of the same themes and weird characters, <laughs> <laughs> the idea that it might have come from my book might cross somebody's mind. But yeah. uh, I, other than that, it is it is protected work now. And once I took that step, I felt better about distributing it for people to read. Mm. And Paul Page, that's a pretty good name for an author, isn't it? I like it. <laughs> it seems, seems to work okay. Yeah, I think they call that pre-normative, pre, I'll try and say it, pre-normative determinism, where your second name, or maybe name in general, is to do with your job, isn't it? Yeah, it worked out. It seemed to be a very good name. And mm. believe it or not, it has it has personal connotations. So yeah. it's a good name to write under. Yeah, absolutely. And as well, you're going to be writing some short stories based on this book, right? That's right. I've already written several, and I'm going to be writing a few more. And then mm. uh, as part of our marketing uh, idea, my marketing idea is to release those. Um, on our website yeah that's exciting do you think that they are maybe necessary people after reading this book are going to want more uh well so far I've, I've i've let several people read two of the short stories mm. and one of them people loved it so much that they want me to go ahead and try to publish that i'm just not i'm going to go ahead and release it for free yeah. but uh now that you've read the book the short story that I wrote involves um, Megan and Daniel ah. when they're young. Hmm. So and so a prequel. Yeah. So it's kind of a throwback and it allows, uh, it allows anybody that's read the book to reconnect with those characters, which I think yeah. will be nice. And why do you want to do them as short stories and not, you know, individual novels each? I probably don't have the time. I mean, I <laughs> suppose I could do novels on all these different portions, yeah. but I think um, the idea that I've already begun a sequel and mm. the sequel has a particular timeline. So it runs in two timelines, actually. It runs immediately after the mm. events in New York and then it runs much later in the future yeah. to show what, what the world is like after what happened in New York. Yeah, that's quite a cool idea, and it's branching out. And how does the sequel compare to the current book? Uh, presumably, if people like the first book, they'll like the second one. I would think that. I would hope that's true. So yeah. far, the sequel is not fully written. I've written about one hundred and ninety pages um, of scenes for the sequel, but uh, they that also seems to be well received, and my editor likes it too. So, yeah. And how do you get your inspiration to write so many books in the same universe? Does it come naturally to you? Yes, I think there's I think there's a lot of stories to tell there. And so yeah. I just try to tell them. Um, I've always been an imaginative person. So mm -hmm. I think it kind of flows. Once I got the, the original context on um, the themes that we tried to do in the book, in, including at least some of the religious overtones in the in the book. Uh, that's not the major point of the story, but it certainly does seem to me that in the sequel, a lot of people are not going to be very happy about what happened. And so if you try to, I try to think, what will people's reactions be? And then yeah. write that. And is there a name for the sequel or is it going to be Along Came a Lion 2? <laughs> it's called A Bringer of War. Oh, I like that. Any yeah. particular reason why it's called that? Or would it be obvious when you read the book? I w well, I would hope it would be obvious when you read it. But the reason mm -hmm. that we chose that is, is uh, as you know in the book, um, certain people get gifts. Mm -hmm. uh, they're given gifts uh, by one of the major characters, Calvin Meyer. And um, one of the things that, that is going to come out later is they, certain of them are giving a natural long life, but that is not something that is normal for people that have these gifts. 
but he helps human beings be able to prolong their lives if they don't have gifts. So it creates a dichotomy situation where you have people that have these gifts, but they're going to die on a normal, on a normal schedule, I should say. (laughs) And they kind of get irritated about that because they're going to grow old and, and, and die. Whereas if human beings want to take part of the medical advances, they will live longer. So the bringer of war is somebody it's the concept is somebody that can heal these gifted people to prolong their life. And to me, what would happen is you'd have a whole bunch of people that really want that person Mm. that, uh, and probably would not stop at, at being from being in control of that person if they wanted to prolong their life. Yeah, I think they're quite rightly annoyed as well. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. It, it should make for very interesting, at least it is now, mm. uh, and what I've written so far, very interesting interactions when you have people that have these gifts, but they know that they are finite and they're kind of mad that they're not given long life, whereas mm. other people have that option. And it creates, it, I think it creates a really neat kind of theme to explore mortality yeah you know and the website that you're you've created to promote this book is emogen.co which is quite suitable isn't it because emogen of course exists in the book that's right that's right we it's it's the company from the book and so we went ahead um my editor team and, and i decided that that would be the a really good place to go uh to try to create a marketing environment is to take Imogen and kind of run with it, which is what we're doing. So mm-hmm. yes, it's Imogen.co. And what's been your favorite part of promoting the book so far? Um, I actually like the short stories mm. um, portion of it and being able to share those with people. Um, and as far as promoting the book, I, I really enjoy getting people's feedback. Not all the yeah. feedback is stellar. Some people really like, for example, really like New York and we're not too happy with yeah. <laughs> some of the things that happen in the book. <laughs> and other people have their own opinions about the value, you know, who should be a president and, yeah. and what have you. And they have their own opinions about that. And which is fine mm-hmm. because to me, the book is written as a cautionary, cautionary tale. Yeah. And it's very much about the cult of personality and if I have people thinking about it and talking about it, then I think I've done my job. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose it's that thing of there's no such thing as bad publicity. If I get 500,000 people buy my book to tell me they don't like it, mm. I'll say thank you. Yeah, unless it's only one star reviews on Amazon. But then yeah, you that's never know. Good. If you still get loads good. of money, then maybe I suppose. Out. I suppose you can take the one star badge and be happy with the money. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And that's possible. Yeah. Do you think that after the sequel, you will do a third book? I think so. I have in mind um, if you, you know, through the, through the at the end of the first book, and I, I don't know how much I want to give it all away, but <laughs> at the end of the first book, you realize that there is there is a future coming, yeah. and it's very abstract about what that is and when it's going to happen. And I think I'd like to write what that is. Yeah. Like the reason why, like what motivates that character. Yeah. And I think people would like to hear what that is as well, of course. I I would hope so. So far people (laughs) ask that question a lot. What are we going to, when are you going to tell us what he's doing? Why, Why is he doing it? And I try to be as vague as possible about that because the, uh, the that is coming, I hope, yeah. in the third book. And what is it for you that maybe makes you love writing? Because it, for some people, maybe not all, it can be quite boring typing away or writing away um, and they find it really hard to write. But even for those people, I suppose, is the end product of people reading something and enjoying it and getting positive feedback quite nice um that's an that's a very good question to ask me because i'll I'll answer it like this i write on average hundreds of pages a week but they are there for work work so it's all written Mm -hmm. for judges or the opposing parties in a case Mm -hmm. and they are 
they're not designed to be entertaining. They're, yeah. just, they're designed to be adverse and it's argument. And, and I'm trying to convince a judge one side or the other or the court of appeal to do one thing or another. Um, and I love to write and I really get enjoyment out of being able to put my ideas on paper and then have someone read them and go, oh my gosh, this was great. And if I can, if I can briefly share one point, there's a point in the book where a character dies. And I had somebody that was reviewing my book had come to love that character. And he called me out of the blue and he just said, you killed him. <laughs> and I, was like, I knew what he meant because he said he was reading it. And it just made me laugh because he was so upset that that particular character had not survived to the end of the book. But yeah. Court isn't supposed to be entertaining, but a lot of people seem to have found a lot of entertainment out of that Johnny Depp trial this year, haven't they? That's very true. I mean, the uh, the, the nuances of Court um, is boring as hell, mm. but the trials are always, at least I love trial work. I always have playing mm. to the jury, laying out your case and arguing it to the jury. It makes it far more entertaining. Of course, I'm sure the the parties, which were you know, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp probably didn't want all the salacious stuff mm. about their activities to be revealed in public, but <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> they'd already rolled that dice, so they're they're you know stuck in a public trial. So yeah, well, do you know when Along Came a Lion will be out? Is there a date yet? I'm actually uh, trying to target for the end of this year, but yeah. the reason I don't want to commit to a date is because if it does get picked up. By a traditional publisher for initial publication then i'm not in control of that yeah. it'll be something that they'll decide based on their schedule their release schedule um but if i'm going to self-publish uh the goal would be to do it sometime by the end of this year there's a lot of fun themes going on in the book some of them are very relevant to the, all the chaos that's going on in the united states today and mm -hmm. uh have illusions all over the place and it might be a fun book to get out there so people can talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, where can we keep up to date with you to find out when it will be out? Um, we are going to have um, not only Imogen.co being the website where we're going to do our releases, but we're going to be on Twitter and Instagram. And I think they set me up with something on Tumblr too. Um, on Tumblr uh, for updates and details. And I'll be announcing every time I release a short story also on all of those platforms. Excellent. Well, many thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you.